February, on March 13, 2017. I'll call the special town meeting to order. To the Board of Registrars, I have given you a certificate. This is to certify that in accordance with Section 172-4 of the North Reading of the Code of North Reading Quorum of 150 voters required to call the special town meeting to order is present.
move to dispense with the reading of the warrant. Behind me, 
between 16 million and 19 million is, is something that we have to achieve after this evening. And one of the things is we can sell the property by before December 4th of this year, we can receive an additional 10%. If we go beyond that point, we sell it within five years, we'll get an additional 5%. So you can see that's one of the reasons why we have some range in our net proceeds from that $30 million. But I feel pretty confident as I stand here in front of you today, just from the sale of 104 Old Road, we're certainly going to be in that $18 million range. I really feel confident saying that. But with that, it's going to allow us to really look at our future for capital investments that we need in town. We'll see in our strategic plan. There's been a lot of things sitting in our strategic plan since I've been in the board for seven years. And when Mr. Blaine was on the board 10 years ago, the one that's been sitting idle that we haven't been able to address because we can't continue to put our future back to the residents' taxes. This now allows us to take this investment of $18, $19 million and reinvest it in our capital. So we can do the things that we much want to do. We talked about senior centers today, or new fire stations today. This has really allowed us to have that opportunity. That's why this whole market of foreign markets are very important tonight. And I'll just touch one on one more thing. Not only do we get this net sale proceeds, but after five years, when Paul Holmes finishes the construction of 450 units, we're going to see revenues, an additional revenue of over $3 million a year. That's pretty substantial. And that really will help us reduce some of the increases that we've seen over the past years. And we're also talking about several hundred people now moving into town that will be shopping at retail stores along Route 28. I think that would be wonderful to see Route 28 now start to have a little more life to it. I'd like to turn it over to our town planner, Danielle McKnight, who will give you some now details on the Warren articles on the board. And 
as is the case throughout uh, most of the rest of town, two parking spaces uh, per unit will be required. Article 3, changes to the industrial office zone district. These are changes that have previously been discussed by the CPC as priorities for industrial The CPC believes the entire industrial office zone could benefit from them, so they are proposed as changes um, to the whole industrial office district and not just the new overlay. And they are um, raising the minimum building height from 50 feet to 60 feet, um, helping to define the height limits of underground parking, both in stories and in feet, um, and allowing for more variety in the size of commercial spaces. Right now, small retail spaces are not allowed um, in this article to change. Currently, the threshold is 50,000 square feet. You can't have a retail space that is smaller than that. Um, in Article 4, um, this is a change to our word use and definition section. Uh, this is a glossary in the zoning code. Um, overlays can be more restrictive or they can be less restrictive, allowing additional uses that are otherwise not permitted. The sentence crossed out in the warrant article is being eliminated because it's not consistent with the rest of our zoning code and it doesn't reflect the reality of what an overlay district actually uh, is supposed to be. And this article would ensure that all of our zoning overlay districts, including the one being introduced Christine Bedouris, 30 Northridge. Um, how many buildings are you proposing, and are they going to be six-story buildings? All right. How many buildings will there be, and are they six-story buildings? Mr. President, so the store is going to be nine buildings with 50 units in each building. Four stories. Um, has a study been done on the traffic on that road? That's one of the things they're going to be doing in due diligence, but they've already done some initial. They've already met with METRA last week, and all the data shows that based on this type of use, it should have very little impact at any all. That's one of the concerns that we had to do for all the proposals that were submitted, and that's why we're having to do that. Thank you very much. Carol McGillicuddy, 16 Marblehead Street. Um, so this is going to be over 55, and I'm wondering if there's a percentage of this is going to be considered affordable? Mr. Okay, thank you. George Lago, 18 Ridgeway Road. Um, there was one piece on the on the map um, that dealt with the I believe it was the town uh, well area. Uh, I remember when I went to the a couple of meetings, um, 
by connecting to the uh, new system already. Uh, it was highly recommended that we not give up our right uh, to have a well. Is there anything in this plan, even though we don't plan to maintain the usual uh, areas for water supply, would anything be compromised that if in the future uh, we would be able to do it in a separate system that contains the area or, you know, <coughs> would they not, not, no longer be suitable uh, to take water from those areas? Mr. Thank you, Mr. Margaret. So, so that particular area we're talking about, is we're going to still stay in the retention of the town. We're going to still own that. And we will have an easement out to that property and access to it if we need it. But where the septic system or the leachate field is going to be is completely on the opposite side of that. So we must, there are causes that are going to be going to those studies right now, but there is no way they can affect those waters. Edward McGrath, 8 Wall Road. Um, question on the proceeds. Mr. Prisco is talking upwards uh, in the ballpark of $18 million. Is, the, and it's, is it the intent that this is going to be used for capital infrastructure? Or is it earmarked, for, or restricted, earmarked or restricted? I'm not sure what the right phrase or if that decision is made or what's going on. You know, because that seems to be a big selling point. I have an answer for you, but I'm going to let This is Robert. Sale town owned land it has to go into a receipt reserve fund called sale town owned land, and it can only be used for specific purposes. So it can be used to offset our debt service budget for items that have a greater life of 20 years that have been bought it for 20 years or longer, or it can be used for capital items. So it's, we can't just you know appropriate it towards the operating budget annually.
have to evaluate and come up with a solution over the next five to six years. So by the time that's fully all filled out, this subject's going to get addressed. We're going to have an answer to that question. Until we have the money, we can't really decide what we're going to do because we have to finish tonight. We have to get these more articles approved, get through the process, complete the sale, and then that discussion, we're going to come up with a definitive answer. But yes, there is plans. We've already started working on them. And uh, hopefully, you guys will include these warning calls tonight. We will have an ability to do something about it. It won't go unaddressed. Ms. Ms. Fillmore. Uh, Pat Fillmore, 24 Field, Chris Terrace. That was one of my <coughs> questions. Police, fire, DPW, maintenance of the area. But now you're talking 450 age restricted, 55 and older, a little bit younger than I am. And if I'm going to downsize, I'm not going to go into a townhouse in the town that I love and pay $450,000 or above to go into these things. So if these things don't sell, then what happens? Do they're just vacant houses, vacant townhouses <coughs> that are just gonna or are you going to open it up? I mean, if it's not 40B, how many people are going to be able to afford these? Mrs. Pierce. The, uh, the people that do the building of these things do their homework. In other words, they wouldn't be proposing to build this if they hadn't already identified a very strong market. And I think they've done that. So it's unlikely that you go um, empty. We kind of thought that about uh, Edward when we built that. But Warren, Edgewater is a totally different ball game because that's 40B. Part of it's 40B. Right. But they still do the homework. They still identify the market. I mean, they will not be building uh, this, this. They have to identify the fact that there was a market for it. Okay. Again, back to my question then. If you're saying they're going to sell, if they don't, what happens? Mr. <coughs> President. Meeker's going to be involved in it through the, all the way through. 
So the data will show. They're going to have to present that to us. So this is the infrastructure? They're going to have the responsibility to show us that the road, the way it's constructed today, if there's any improvements that have to be done, they're going to be done. But right now, the way it looks, this type of use will not have the heavy use of if we had a big commercial property over there where you had a lot of in and out, you had like a marketplace over there, yes, you would have a significant amount of traffic going on and off the property. In this particular use, you typically don't see a lot of people leave until about 8.30 or 9 o'clock in the morning, and you typically see people come back by 3 or 4 in the afternoon. That's the type of use you see. You don't get that early morning good work traffic. You don't, don't get that late evening you come home from work. Because it's an automatic feed to 93 and anything that you use. They're going to head that way and see if they're still working. Um, however, this process will have to go through the planning board. I mean, there's a process by which we look at all those different items. But what tonight's um, task is to uh, get the zoning in place so that we can even entertain the sale. Because if we don't do that, we can't entertain the sale. If we entertain the sale, then they have to come before the planning board and we will address all of those issues, uh, things like you know, traffic and, and, uh, and so forth. So you, you'll protect the townspeople from the infrastructure as far as the road benefits go? Yes, ma'am. We've been the best we can for many years. <laughs> you know, I welcome Thank you. Mr. Reed. Bill Reed, 17 Grandview Road. Uh, I'm left wondering if we're going to be tied into MWRA by the time this project comes online because I don't care if you put the septic system on the other side of town, you strip that piece of property of all its trees, it's going to affect the water that we tap from that well. Mr. Prisco. Mr. Moderator. So June 2019, we're going to be turning on MWRA water. The construction of this, the first building may be built under the existing water structure, but by the time I think the second or the third buildings are built, we'll already be tied into MWRA, and then this is supposed to take about five years, I believe. Five, five years to have it completely built up. We'll be under MWRA way before that. And is, are there plans in place to turn off that well? <coughs> I'm sorry. Is, are there plans in place to turn off the well? We, we are turning off our wells. I don't believe we're going to mop on. We're going we're gonna to turn them off, and we're going we're gonna to have secondary connection through and over as our emergency backup. And then the wells will always exist. I don't believe we're gonna maintain them, but we're gonna definitely keep them in place though if we ever need them in the future. But uh, we're gonna, right now our backup plan is to connect through our existing and over connection for our emergency backup. This is Capazuno. more 
commercial coming in along 28, you'll see it improve. Mr. Mr. Capizzuto. Um, I understand that, and I've also been hearing about the renovation of Route 28 for probably 50 years. We used to come up to Route 28 to go to Kitty's Restaurant when I was a junior in high school. That was a big deal, Kitty's. Route 28 in North Reading has not changed in 50 years. I get wisdom. I would love a change. I would love it. We all do. We all want a change. I would love it to look great. However, I still believe that we're taking the easy way out, that we are not aggressively seeking commercial enterprises in North America. Further discussion? Hold on, Mr. Law. Yeah. June Story, 10 Southwood Road. I'd like you to clarify a little bit for me, and I'm not really casting stones here. We all know it will impact our police, it will impact our park, it will impact traffic. I can take Little Southwood Road, 50 years of living here. Oh, we're going to put the road through and it won't impact your traffic. We now have a speedway. So I'd rather you just be honest and say, yes, this will impact us. It is going to impact traffic. I traveled that road, and you know, if, however many units you put in there, there will be a, a traffic impact. The other thing I'd like to, I, I just don't know the rules in this. Why is there not some affordable housing? And in our town, what do we do for affordable housing? I, I'm just not aware of what it is. Mr. Krishna. So let me take the roads first. I don't think anybody in this room will disagree with you that there'll be some impact. There will be. But I believe we have the processes in place, we have the right people in our departments that are going to be reviewing these plans to make sure that the impact is as little as it can be. It definitely will be an impact. And hopefully, with the proceeds from this, we'll be able to address the issues that we have with the, bur with the overburden use of our police and our fire departments today. And if you want to go tour that fire department, you're welcome to. Anytime Chief Warning will open the doors for you to see it, it needs to be addressed. We agree. This gives us our best chance to finally come up with a long term solution, a 21st century solution for our fire department and then get the ability for the police department to expand a little bit where they are now. And it will all impact our tax bills. I'm sorry? And it will all impact our tax bills, well, such just, as sewerage, such as the water. I mean, I think we, we all need it, and, and we understand that. But I think it would be great if you could say, yes, this has a direct impact. Well, I won't say we'll have a direct financial impact on the current residents today because with the $18 million, roughly of $16 million, my hope is that we do the right things with the investments of that money that will pay for these types of capital investments we want to make. That would be the ultimate goal. And again, once we get through this process, we have those funds, we would work with our income, we work with our finance director, the town minister, the board of selectmen to make sure that we come up with a solution that we can afford through using these proceeds. That would be the ultimate goal. And when we talk about soaring Concord Street, there has to be some initial investment in the town funds, but the better is pay for that. The property owners that are on Concord Street today will pay for the installation of any storage that's on Concord Street. We're not soaring anywhere else in town. That's not the goal. Concord Street needs storage. Or will, or it'll stay the way it is today and we will never be able to increase that commercial base. And then affordable, I will let Mr. Pierce answer that. Mr. Pierce, on the affordable housing issue. Thank you. Um, yeah, we've, we've done fairly well. We, um, <clears throat> I think we're we, we, we past our 10%. We have our 10% affordable housing. Uh, when we put in the um, Edgewater properties, Pretty close. And, uh, although we've had a little bit of growth in our housing stock now, so we're, 
The ball is slightly behind, so the state's mandated the 10%, we're pretty close. Uh, I also just want to mention that uh, the CPC is currently working with the housing consultant um, a grant funded project to create our town's first affordable housing production plan. So we're currently working on that right now and um, we uh, expect to have that project wrapped up in June. So we really hope to, to come out of that process with some good ideas for new affordable housing creation. Mr. Long. Trust the OT Ridgeway Road. Um, I've heard a lot of concerns um, about fire and, and traffic. I'm just wondering, I, I, my question may not apply to this particular article, um, but when this development goes in, is there any way um, to impose upon the developer um, any changes that might need to take place on, on the roads in terms of ex egress and, and entrance? And then with the fire, I, I had heard some talk um, a while back about uh, larger developments like this um, being required to have a sprinkler system installed in the building. So I, don't, I didn't know if any of our building codes um, on this particular piece of property where there's going to be um, you know, four stories, quite a few buildings. Um, Instead of having to look at the option of a satellite fire department, is it possible to impose on, <coughs> on these dwellings um, better safe fire safety, such as a sprinkler system? And if we do that up front so the developer knows he has to include that in his cost, you know, in terms of, say, I'm only using it as an example, it's something that might be done, a sprinkler system and road enhancements, is that I don't know where that would take place. I don't know if it has to be somehow referenced in, in these or if that's under uh, when you go for a uh, building permit or something. Mr. Prescott, so the builder is going to be required to put sprinkler systems. There, there will be sprinkler systems installed in this yes. And I'm going to let Mr. Pierce address the roads. Mr. Pierce. Thank you. Um, basically, it's got to go through the process process and, and, um, and they will do as, as, as Mr. Bristol mentioned before, traffic study. Until we have all of that information, it's pretty hard for me to tell you exactly what they're going to not going to do, but they will have to create a safety plan and, and we'll make and the rules and regulations we have to make sure that happens. So again, tonight we need to get our zoning in place so that we can actually make this deal and then they've got to come to the table and uh, show us what they're going to do and then we'll look at uh, the impacts of what they're going to do and see what kind of remediation is necessary. Thank you. Mr. Venezia. Yeah. 
Discussion on that? Seeing none, all those in favor of moving to the question, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Well, now the main motion is on the, on the floor. Seventeen grand euro. Just curious, why sixty feet? What's magic about sixty? What, what can they do with sixty feet that they can't do with fifty? Ms. McKnight. Section 200-4, as specified in Article 4, as 
Mr. Scott, the Board of Selectmen will unanimously recommend. The CPC, Mr. Pierce. The Community Planning Commission unanimously recommend. The Finance Committee, Mr. Silver. The Finance Committee unanimously recommends. Discussion. This also requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Article? Mr. Prisco, just one quick second. I know you've heard a lot of thank yous tonight, but I just want a special thank you to my EDC members that are here tonight. Thank you. I won't have to stand up and embarrass you, but thank you very much. And a special thank you to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I mean, they gave us a property for a dollar. Like Mr. Minetti was talking about. It's a big opportunity for the town. And Brad, I want to thank you and Bruce Tarr. And we started out with a meeting in Bruce's office, and here we are today, and we want to thank you for that. Uh, uh, citizens, business owners, 
a few people from some of the leagues in town, a representative from the Board of Selectmen, and we also have a couple of um, non-voting members from the Finance Committee, and they said, let's drop this item on their lap. So we took control of this item. Brief history, when the turf field was completed seven or eight years ago, we initially were told we had to put in a new bathroom facility because there were new state laws that required bathroom facilities. And that would be based on the capacity of the bleachers. At that time, we were told that we had to put in 26 fixtures, 13 women's, 13 men's. Fortunately, our town building inspector, our town plumbing inspector, we all got together, we said, we don't have the money to do this, it's gonna cost us a fortune. They went in, we got a waiver, because one, the facility was basically the same size as it was before, and we we're gonna be using it for the same thing. Two, the high school was right there, and I believe it was within 300 feet of the facility, so we could use that as our restrooms. Fast forward about five years, obviously the high school's gone. Um, we've put a new building in that area, the team room. We need bathrooms to comply with the state. Again, working with our building inspector, working with the health inspector, plumbing, the plumbing inspector, the state plumbing inspector, we were able to get a waiver again. Plus, we were able to get a reduction in the number of fixtures we need from 26 to 13. Eight stalls for the women's room, two stalls for the men's room, three urinals for the men's room. I know you really like all these details, but I think it's important. As we should mention, it's really great being the opening act for recreational marijuana. <laughs> but anyway, so that's where we stand today. It, at Junetown meeting last year, $50,000 was appropriated to hire an engineering firm to come in and work with us to develop plans. We've been working with them since approximately mid to late July. We've looked at a number of different options, including retrofitting the current team room, which currently has two locker rooms, a referee's room, and two storage spaces on each side of that building. At the initial proposal, when the initial proposals came in in October, retrofitting the team room was the lowest cost proposal. My guess is, I'm quite certain that that proposal would be more expensive today because every proposal we got in October has increased probably 10, 15, 20% since October. That said, the school committee in good conscience and the school administration in good conscience cannot recommend going into a two-year-old building and tearing it up to put bathrooms on each side of that building. One, it wasn't built for that purpose, and two, I don't know how many of you would build a house and two years later basically wouldn't say we're going to tear the whole thing up and start over again. So the school committee, that's a school building, and the school committee has voted unanimously to not support that project for that building. And in good conscience, I can't see us doing it moving forward. Also, CBI Engineering, the company we used for this project, recommended against it. And the architect was a school project basically said, I don't understand why we would go into a two-year-old building and tear it up to put bathrooms in there. Why don't you just build a new building for bathrooms? So that's where we stand uh, today. It's a couple of, um, in January, we had a cost for a building that would go where the current concession stand is. The concession stand would be torn down. And the cost was $565,740. When the, we, we, we selected that project, they came back to us in February, uh, excuse me, early March, and that became a $652,000 project. Um, there was an additional $60,000 for site work and an additional $40,000 for the prefab building. The committee looked at that in good conscience. We said, we, we don't want to bring that number to the town. We think it's too high. So part of that $652,000 is approximately $50,000 to put the project up to bid. Either way, you're going to have to put the project up to bid. So the decision by the Athletic Facilities Committee on a 7 to 1 vote was to come here tonight, ask for $50,000, ask for the selectmen, to ask for $50,000 to put it up to bid so we can come forward with a true number in June as to what this project will cost. We'll have bids in hand. We know what it'll cost. 
Uh, I should also mention that uh, the town administrator has recommended that $450,000 in free tax be applied to this project. Uh, the 1.6 million we have in free cash. So if you, want to, you can you can see the team room the team room is up there where the current concession stand is. That's the current concession stand. The concession stand will be torn down. There are no current plans for a new concession stand. We are going to make some interim plans with the groups that use the concession stand. We're going to work with the town health inspector and building inspector and anybody else we need to work with to find out what we can sell there. Um, there's potential for getting food trucks, getting a portion of a food truck sell, a portion of the profit. There's a lot of opportunities, a lot of options. Long term, we want a concession stand there, but I can tell you uh, that in our meetings, there has not once been discussion about more town funds to build a concession stand. This town is very generous. We raised over $125,000 for that field project, and I'm quite convinced that Parks and Rec and other groups in town, if they put their minds to it, would be able to raise funds for a new concession stand. So this, this shows you that um, the rest of Eight stalls on one side, including one handicap stall for the women. And then you see the, there's two sinks and two sinks on the men's side with three urinals and two stalls. And as I mentioned, we voted by our 3 7 meeting, 7 to 1, to come forward and ask for 50000 Again, that 50000 is going to have to be spent put this project out to bid either way. It'll complete design of the project and it'll get us uh, to a point of putting the project out to bid. We felt that coming here tonight, we would probably come here tonight and ask for $700,000. Nobody felt comfortable doing that. I can tell you one thing we learned. Small building projects are a bigger hassle for contractors than large building projects because they have to do almost all the same thing they do for a big project, all the staging, all the equipment, it's just done in a midi fashion, but they're a lot more expensive than uh, we had expected going in. Bottom line, we have to continue to show progress to getting a restroom facility there, or at some point, our waiver is going to disappear, and without what restrooms, the field at some point will be closed if we don't put a restroom facility there. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Just to add to Mel's comments, I think what's important to understand is, you know, if you look at the complex today, as you know, what it was just a couple of years ago when high school was standing there, we now have a true complex. So we have your turf field, which is used for uh, football and soccer. You have the baseball field right there. We have a new uh, softball field and an all-purpose field with the lacrosse and soccer uh, also. So what we're looking for here is a freestanding bathroom facility which meets the state code, which we have a mandate to uh, fulfill. So that uh, as we looked at the retrofitting of the team room, again, based upon input from the school administration, uh, school, the school administration, and the people who have to use it on a regular basis, the recreation department, uh, retrofitting it and basically blowing up a two-year-old building didn't seem to make an awful lot of sense. Or William, who's our architect, or record for the school project, that we looked at it. First, we uh, view at it and frowned upon uh, retrofitting uh, the facility. Yes, it may be the cheapest option uh, several months ago, but again, those were just schematic designs. We've taken the uh, subcommittee, decided to take a look at it. The school committee took its position and had input from the school administration how uh, it would not work best and suit the needs of the facility long term that it was not necessarily a viable option and we moved on. So I think there will be some discussion in relation to you know, why not go with the cheapest route. We were looking at a facility that's going to serve this community for several generations and a new complex which has now been developed, uh, which wasn't there previously. So for us, we thought it was important to take a look at the, I think we've got seven different iterations as to uh, different design and plans and uh, landed on this particular facility in this particular location uh, to meet the meeting session stands and says that it wouldn't have been. It served us probably 35 years now at this particular point. We're talking about a facility that's going to serve us for two or three generations. So 
So for us, uh, we thought it was very important to put forth a proposal a project uh, that would meet our needs, uh, not necessarily the cheapest exit, uh, but meet the needs of the facility uh, for the foreseeable future. And we think this is uh, the best approach. In the light of uh, our plan was to come before you tonight and ask for a full construction uh, funding. Based upon the distance we got, our cut level, we believe that the uh, architect that uh, put forth the numbers for us has taken a very conservative approach. Uh, we're extremely hopeful that if we go to bid, which is why we're asking for money to bring the design plans to the stage where we can go to bid, but we're hopeful that the uh, project will come in and get the cash. The reduced price has been proposed. And uh, at that point, the subcommittee and the ones that we would feel much more comfortable coming before town meeting in June uh, with the real number. Mr. Ewell. Thank you, Thank you Uh Good evening. <clears throat> I am the uh, minority vote on this uh, issue. And um, I just want to say that thank you, first of all, for everyone being here, because this is a very important meeting to the town. Uh, I think it's important for us uh, to understand that many of the committees you know, work together to create uh, solutions for the town that uh, are to be cost effective, functional, and serve the community uh, as best as it can. I think you see that in the prior articles one through four, where you see that uh, committees work together and the end result was um, um, 18 million, 19 million dollars to the town. So that's what happens when, when we work together. Um, I would like to, um, if it's okay with you, uh, moderator, I would like to have leave of the meeting for 10 minutes to uh, make an, uh, I want to make a proposal and amendment to the um, current motion. You want to leave the meeting for purposes of presentation, Mr. Ewell? That's correct. Mr. Ewell is requested for 10 minutes to leave the meeting for purposes. Make a motion first and then ask for this. Okay. Uh, I would like to make a, uh, an amended motion uh, to the current motion. Is that I move to amend the motion for warrant article 5 to read as follows. To appropriate the sum of $50,000 from free cash for the design, construction, reconstruction, and remodeling of the existing team building and new storage structure at the Arthur J. Kenny Field, including, not limited to, public restrooms and any cost incidental or related thereto. We need a second of that. Second. Uh, the 
in, in addition to that, I happen to visit the site throughout the construction. And uh, during that uh, time, I, I observed the construction of that, uh, that building. And uh, I personally uh, do not recommend making any modifications to it. Mr. Thank you very much, Margarita. Yes, uh, there have been uh, many discussions here about the process. Mr. Yule, yes? before you get too far ahead of yourself, is this going to take 10 minutes? Oh. Yes. Okay. Okay. Mr. Yule was asked for a 10 minute leave of the meeting for purposes of a presentation. All those in favor of a 10 minute leave of the meeting, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, behind me, you will see that uh, I have some supporting points to the uh, amended, my amendment to the uh, current motion. Um, the, the big issue here is, uh, you know, is it a functional facility? Will it be able to do this? Back on October the uh, 17th, we had a meeting prior to October, in which we discussed many uh, options. There were options A through E. And um, at the time, option B was the lowest cost, $435,000. And option uh, E uh, was uh, one of the more expensive options, because it was a uh, standalone uh, structure. Excuse me. There has been an awful lot of discussion. Call me, call me Marco Rubio. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, there have been many uh, discussions uh, by the committee, and I appreciate all the hard work that they, they have done. I just think that the, the path that was taken was the, the wrong path to take. They had an option to build a structure. It was um, recommended by the current company that they had at the time that uh, to do the option. At that time, at that, prior to the October town meeting, the uh, FinCom voted in favor of the uh, option B, which option B, uh, yeah, option B, which was the uh, extension of the renovating of the locker rooms. Uh, the school committee, as they mentioned, voted against it. The primary issue was at the time by the school building committee was that they didn't want, there was a new building, and that new building, uh, uh, they didn't wish to have it uh, uh, renovated. As Mel says, why would you renovate a new building? Well, the reason why you would renovate a new building under these circumstances is because it's more cost effective. The plumbing is there, the electricity is there, the walls are there. You have everything there that you need. All you have to do is remodel it and add to it. So it becomes much cost effect, more cost effective. If, uh, as they say, the expenses and the cost of these buildings have increased, or these proposals have increased, they're saying that the uh, uh, cost for the, uh, uh, for the locker rooms, that would increase. In other words, it wouldn't be 435. But all of them increased and all of them are exponentially increasing. And so that becomes uh, an, an issue that becomes moot because they're all moving up. Uh, so the question is, you know, can we have a cost-effective structure that will serve the community as needed? And on a need basis, not on a want basis. And remember, we should all be working together the school committee, the, the uh, FinCom, the Board of Selectmen, the CPC. We work together and we find out what's the best way to go. You take, always take into consideration cost. The cost and difference right now, as you can see uh, behind me, uh, is $217 plus uh, million, dollars, $1,000. So it's an unnecessary expense at that point when you can do it for 435. Uh, 
The structure itself was to satisfy the same needs that any new structure would do. The best use, uh, uh, there's a best use of the established structure, there's a best use of the building, the utilities, because they're still in there, there's a best use of the site utilities, because they're all underground, and they're there. We don't need to add any, uh, uh, any uh, equipment to it. It's easy access uh, for, from the turf field bleachers, there's easy access by the baseball fields, easy access for the softball fields, uh, and the primary benef uh, beneficiary of all these are the uh, students because they get to use these facilities. Uh, don't need a new lift pump, no force main for the site work, no new, new um, structurally sound uh, subsoil uh, conditions. A standalone structure will be more expensive because you have to then create new plumbing, create new electricity, and um, build a whole new structure, and therefore it becomes more expensive. Um, the important thing is that if we approve my amendment, it still shows to the state that we're moving in the direction to try to find the most cost effective way to. Uh, Meet, meet a need, and, and, and that's, the, that's the most important thing. We have to meet a need. Now, if you all, uh, there have been uh, issues and, and discussions on whether to add slab to the um, proposal, whether to add um, uh, a snack shack to it. Now, they're currently off the table as we speak, that's not part of this proposal. But, it's, but it's, there is potential. Now if you look at the back of, course, page two, there's a view of March. There's a citizen's checklist for town meeting. And if you look at item six, the question is, is it a foot in the door proposition? In other words, will it lead to additional costs to the town that are not being presented as we speak right now? Because somewhere down the road, someone may say that, hey, maybe we're going to put a uh, slab there. Why don't we do it? And then they say, well, now that we're going to do that, why don't we put a uh, snack shed? That concerns me because as you go down the road, many times we find sometimes there's intent, and people will look back and say, well, the intent really was to do some additions to this uh, facility. And we can do it, so why not? So I, I'm always concerned about that. Another important issue, excuse me, another important issue is the tax burden being placed on seniors. Seniors support this town. We're going to do a 55 and over uh, Pulte Hall structure in the town. We're going to have 50 to 55 and over. Those seniors pay approximately, from what I understand, about 40% of the education of our children. Because families don't pay a full bill for education. They can't. If it's $20,000, to educate a child and you have two that's forty thousand dollars, you know that we're not paying that kind of money on taxes. So it's gotta come from somewhere and it comes from the uh, older uh, age group. But and they're willing to do that. They're willing to pay for education. They're willing to pay for bathrooms that are needed. But it becomes a burden to seniors but we start asking them to pay for more than, than what is needed. And that, that's where the big issue becomes uh, uh, for seniors. So um, I don't know if you have any questions for me. I don't know, hopefully I can answer all the uh, uh, issues surrounding uh, my uh, amended uh, motion. But I hope you support that because it's very important. We still get the bathrooms, all right, and we still um, uh, get the uh, uh, cover the needs of the, of the community. Now, I understand the school is adamantly opposed to this, 
Uh, and, you know, we're talking about working together. That's what we do. We work together. And sometimes we have to do things we don't want to satisfy the need that we have to have. So, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'd be more than glad to ask with somebody else. Hi, uh, Laura Corbino, no, 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 no. Sorry. Okay. Wait till I call on you. How did I do that? Mrs. Mama was standing first. She was standing, yeah. Almost the whole nine minutes. I'm sorry, it was eight minutes, 59 seconds that she was standing.
So we definitely do not agree with this because no matter what, if it, if it goes, the only thing that we do know is that if we bid it out, if you spend the 50,000 and you bid it out, the numbers probably would come in less. None of us really believe they're gonna come in more. What you don't know, if you take a million dollar building that was built, say get rid of the storage, you know that at some point you're gonna to have to bring in storage or those uh, ugly trailers we build in, put in there again, to keep the field and uh, equipment uh, structures in those buildings. And you know that if they make a mistake, a $500,000 or $600,000 could be more to fix that million dollar building. So we really don't think that's a very good idea. Um, the leagues are the ones that raised the money originally, that Mr. Um, uh, Mel Webster talked about originally. Had we known that we were going to give up that money, maybe we would have kept that money and built a concession stand. But because the groups did work together, and I, I have to say just because one of us disagreed, I was the dissenting vote on that committee. But I will tell you that coming forward after 50,000, that's the position we're in. I agree with that. I agree we have to go forward and there'll be less money. I absolutely do not agree this is the right way to go because we don't know what it's going to cost if they go in and they make a mistake, how much money it's going to cost us. The only safe bet tonight is to go forward with what this committee is asking for, uh, the original facilities committee, ask for the 50,000, put it out to bid, the numbers will probably be less and we'll get it done. Absolutely, we never, never, never suggest putting money into a million dollar building. Thank you. Finance Committee recommendation. Okay. So. Um, the Finance Committee has voted for an opposition to this amendment and two for it. I think that some of the reasons why we've done this is because many of the uh, positive um, things that Mr. Yule has suggested, uh, such as access to baseball and softball fields, uh, primary beneficiary of the students, uh, et cetera, et cetera, are all things that you could equally say about a standalone building. While it is true that the plumbing for, if we were to retrofit the team building, would decrease the cost of this project substantially, it is also true that we have not received an adequate structural engineer's report to suggest what really might happen to the new team building were we to retrofit it. There has been suggestions by architects and by engineers that we would need to add additional steel in order for the building to take this kind of a retrofit. Hence, the Finance Committee voted 4-2 um, against this uh, amendment.
You're not going to go in two years later with jackhammers and tear up everything and start over again. And that's what we're talking about here. The other thing I do want to point out is this is a school and a town project. That's on town land. It's not a school project. There are, that facility gets used almost every day of the week from the end of March to the end of October. And there are youth football, youth lacrosse, there's field hockey, there's graduation, there's Relay for Life, there's high school lacrosse boys and girls, there's high school soccer boys and girls, there's high school football, there's JV soccer, JV lacrosse. That thing gets used all the time. Just, it, we're not talking about adding on. We're talking about going in and tearing apart an existing building. Our architects have said there's no guarantee that once they get in there that something bad isn't going to happen. That, that's all I'm telling you. But I still say that there has to be a way. A jackhammering, can't you add it on to where you have all the infrastructure there? There's no space. What? There's no space. There's no space there. Mr. Webster, wait to be recognized, and then please go to the microphone. There's no space there. It's built into the slope coming down from where the new all-purpose field is. There's no space to add on there. That's, that's why we got this engineering firm um, last year, and that's why we put it out to bid to find an engineering firm to come in and say, where's the best location? They never recommended putting an addition or tearing up the existing building. Well, then I think the storage, there has to be storage in this enormous building in some way, shape, or form. You have a beautiful um, athletic equipment. And I'm not against athletes. And I mean, I was all for the turf field. Is that still here? That they put in from Hillview. I just find that the taxes in North Reddit, you should be getting your value. We have how many acres of Smith property? We paid him to take the bridges back. We have land that you will not allow people in this town to park on the street and walk. I just find it's just a waste of money to go and spend this kind of money and propose that there's going to be a fire station, $18 million. You people can spend $18 million very, very but I'm a little confused of what, at what's happening here. The amendment was, it put a, a specific dollar amount of $50,000. Uh, I'm a... Just a lot, yeah. I think I can clear it up real quick. Okay. okay. The difference is not the dollars. Okay. The difference is not the project per se, other than this amendment specifies that, this, that these bathrooms will go in to the existing T building, okay. not a new structure. Okay. So it is limiting in scope what they can do. It's $50,000 either way, but do you want to limit it to the T building and only the T building? Okay. So if, if this approach is taken, then the concession stand would say that this, you wouldn't have to do anything with the concession stand. And I guess the other thing is, I haven't, I haven't heard anything about, other than what I'm hearing, I keep hearing, having to take it and gut it inside or something. Um, and there was some mention about steel um, limitations, but nobody has said anything about possibly putting a second level in the building. I realize there isn't enough land there to, to pump it. Pump it out, but could something be done on, on top of it? And then, and then the other thing, thing is, it probably doesn't have, have to do with this, but it would, it would drive that decision if, if the new building, if this wasn't done and the new building was put up, would it just be a mirror image of this one? Uh, in which case it's Zion and it was already done. You just have to build it. So I guess I'd like to say. 
I was hoping to get a little bit more information on what was going to be torn down, what was going to be put up, uh, and also if, if it was going to be modified, a little bit more detail on, on the modifications. I just feel kind of limited on what the information I have to go concession stand. The concession stand is extremely limited right now. I think that's the best way to put it, Parks and Rec. Uh, it doesn't have a sink. It doesn't have running water. The health inspector is letting us do some things, but there's a lot of things we can't do there anymore. The new health inspector at the buildings, the building is in, is in pretty rough shape. There is, um, there's a lot of holes from the ground that sometimes little animals can come out. And it's just not the building needs to be torn down. It, it's, not, it's not something you need to replace, or it needs to have a foundation put on it, which would be costly. Um, so that building can still be used, but you can't cook there, and, and we have to somehow get water there. That, that's the status of the concession stand. In terms, of, in terms of putting a second floor on, I don't think that's been discussed, but I also don't think that that's possible, especially for handicapped access. We have to have an elevator. That's going to put your costs you know, way, way out of whack. In, in terms of, it's a completely different building. We're talking about a prefab block structure building that would be brought into the site in three pieces, I believe, and then put together. It has all the fixtures in it, everything's there, and then they basically put it on the pad and they tie it all into the water and the electricity, etc. cetera. And it's, it's a lot smaller than the current uh, team room building is right now. Man, look at that. Oh, I'm Tom Manion, 40 Westwood Circle. Uh, first off, uh, my sons don't even go to the high school. They've lived here for 19 years, but I believe in sports, I believe in the students. We haven't talked about the adverse effect on the students with what you're recommending, because you're getting rid of the locker rooms, so now the kids have to get dressed up in the high school, walk all the way down, walk all the way back in half. No, 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 no. So that the rooms would stay the same. The the Everyone in the hall, please, do not go to the microphone on the desk record. Otherwise, we have a dialogue and I'm not in control. Mr. Deal, if you want to respond to the question. Thank you, Mr. Martin. No, we're not talking about eliminating the locker rooms. The locker rooms would, be, would remain. We're talking about remodeling the structure so that it would include access to bathrooms, not through the locker room, obviously. That would be completely separate. 
but to allow a lot of bathrooms to be added to that structure. So, so we're not talking about eliminating locker rooms. Okay. And what about the, the storage? Will we lose the storage? Well, no. I don't see that. I don't see that in the information I have, but they've had well, a discussion. That's what I heard. Will we lose the storage? Now you're talking about it. Mr. Yo. It's a separate question, so a way to be recognized, and Mr. Webster seems to know the answer. We will lose every inch of storage we have under this proposal. So there's a lot of equipment. So the kids are going to have to bring that up and back from the high school uh, where we store. Uh, that seems like an awful lot of that. This is your Right now we're talking about the amendment. 
which is to limit limit the scope. So we're going, and then when we vote, we will vote on the amendment first, and then and that will go up or down, and that will take us to the main motion. Okay. Will there be an opportunity to ask questions about the original proposal? Once we dispense with the amendment. So right now the discussion is focused on limiting the scope to the team building only. Sir. Don Miller, uh, 6 Ashwood Drive. Uh, I only know before I came into this meeting what I read in the paper. And I guess after seeing Mr. Ewell's presentation, I'm equally aghast at his numbers. Why? Is it so expensive? I looked in the paper and we are installing 18 stalls, which I guess is down, going down, but it's uh, $652,000. Even at that, it was over 36000 a stall. When you go by square feet, at 624 square feet, that's over $1,000 per square foot for new construction. As anybody that's been in the construction business knows, even new home costs are in the neighborhood of 150, maybe 200 at the most dollars per square foot. There is a house for sale at 10 Hickory Lane that's going for 625,000. It has 2,000 square feet of space, plus a pool, plus a deck, plus a full house air conditioning, and that is in the neighborhood of 160 dollars per square foot. I don't understand with either of these proposals why it is so expensive to install a half 18, 16, 13, 8 plus 2, whatever the number is, stalls with a roof over it. And I realize there's plumbing, I realize there's a septic system that has to be done, but that has to be done in new houses too. So why are these costs like 10 times what it would cost in the commercial world to do this job. Edgegraph 8 Lower Road. Um, three short questions and short answers. Are the restrooms in the team building? What we say it's for storage. Can we what storage? Is it, is it track hurdles? Is it football equipment? Whatever. And then the last question is the square footage for what the state is requiring us to do. Is that team building big enough? Is there enough square footage to meet the mandate to be in compliance with the state? Mr. Webster, one, from everything we've seen, there is enough space in the team room to, to do that. Um, I do want to make clear that we have had no plans or no design for the team room. This, six, this four, uh, $434,000 price was an incredibly early estimate. There has been no planning done at all for the team room, so I just want to make that clear. Um, in terms of, um, what were the other two questions? Oh, the storage. Storage is all the track equipment, the two golf carts, football equipment, uh, whatever sports are played on that turf field, um, they're, they're stored in that. And we don't have enough storage. There's restrooms in that building for the team. There's one for the referee's room. I believe there's two or three for each team room. We asked if we could use those for the public. We were told absolutely not. Mr. Tilton. Uh, Marty Tilton, 6 Sylvia Road. I'm also uh, the Parks Director in town, and I was on the, I'm on the Athletics Fields uh, Committee. Um, what, you really, what you don't realize, like Mel said, we didn't really initiate the um, 
getting into doing the team run because it was kind of thought that that wouldn't be in, uh, we wouldn't be able to, a feasible direction to go into. Um, so now, if we start that, you're talking even more money to even get that where we are now with the designs to get it out to bid. So we're talking $50,000 that we're asking for to get it to the, through the bid process, but if we go in that direction, we're starting over because they haven't really done any investigation except for mine, uh, little, you know, uh, references. They, they didn't really get into uh, investigating doing the team room. Um, there's a lot of issues in the team room. The people asking, why don't you add on? Why aren't you going back? Well, on top of the team room, there's utilities on top of that. Behind it, you have all the infrastructure for all the drainage that comes down through the school. And in front of it, there's uh, infrastructure on the ground for the drainage of the fields and the team room. So that it's really not an option to go that way. Just without you guys like to know. Um, as I understand it, our amendment is to uh, spend $50,000 and kind of hamstring the committee that's done a lot of work um, and, and they, I've always done very good work and I think it's ridiculous to do that and so I move to the question. Time for a break, huh? On the main, on the main motion, 
I struggled with this because I really struggled with the cost of it. But um, having looked at the, the number of bathrooms or facilities in each, each of the bathrooms, I'm not so sure there's, there's, there's room for cutting it, but the uh, selectmen have assured us that they're going to work with uh, Representative Jones and, and Bruce Tarr to see if there is any way we can bring the cost of this down. The $635,000, I think, is just an outrageous amount of money to have to spend on that. Uh, we, we have to do something. We're required to provide bathroom facilities at the field. We have to do something. But I would like, I, I, I welcome their decision to take the time over the next couple of weeks to see if they can get any relief from the state on the size and the scope of this building. Uh, it seems to be an overkill. Any of us that have gone to a sporting event or to a theater event knows that the one thing you do is you wait quiet uh, for the restaurant facilities. It's, it's, it's a fact of life. We can't build for the maximum crowd that's going to be there. And this facility isn't open every weekend with the stadium uh, the seats filled with people. So it, it seems like we're, we're, we're being required to do a heck of a lot more than we ought to have to do here. And if the, the selectmen and the town administrator, through our elected representatives and state, state government, can get some additional relief from the size of this building, bring the cost down, I think that would be great. So I, I have voted for it, but because I have confidence that they're going to move forward and try to mitigate this cost as best they can. It's just too much money. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. To Mr. Kelleher's point, and uh, earlier some other comments from the finance committee and other members of the public in relation to the concern as to what we need to do down here and what's being required of us. Uh, we spoke with Representative Jones earlier. And again, uh, we appreciate his prior commitment and assistance in uh, getting this uh, facility looked at again by the state. And uh, we're committed to moving it again over the next couple of weeks before we go on to this, uh, this structure. Uh, just, just again, to reiterate, you know, originally it was required to have 26 uh, fixtures in here. The state has already agreed to cut that down to uh, 13, cut it in half. I don't want to get these hopes up. And if we don't ask, we don't see. And uh, the representative's commitment, the board's commitment to uh, move forward and request again to stay coming towards the division of relief and we'll do so. Uh, I just want to say that we've been committed to doing this. And to this gentleman's point over here, we prefer price per square foot is extraordinarily high, which is uh, one of the very reasons why we're coming before you tonight for uh, just enough money to put it out to bid to see what it really is going to cost us. Uh, we believe that what's being proposed is a facility that would best suit the needs, the long-term needs of the facility and the school program as well as the community as a whole. Uh, and we believe that the estimates that were put forth were extremely conservative. And we were hoping to get the vote to bid through the network and come back to the June time we uh, request for an appropriation to the facility uh, with the real network. So uh, we appreciate the comments. Uh, keep in mind that the inputs are spending uh, days and weeks and uh, months of looking into this are all taxpayers too and are deeply concerned as anybody else in the community is going to cost for this. It's, it's extraordinary. So we're uh, committed to getting a, a real price on the structure as proposed, but we want to need to get the plans to a final stage and that's what we're proposing this evening. So we appreciate your support. Just to that, that's it. Jerry Minutes here, Athletic um, Facilities Committee and Vice Chairman of the School Committee. Again, I'd echo what Steve said, and uh, we support Mr. Caliber for the School Committee and the Athletic Facilities Committee in pursuing fewer fixtures and maybe being able to downsize the size of this building and, and reduce the cost. I just want to remind everybody what you're voting for tonight is the money to go forward with the bid documents. If the price comes back too high and we come to you in June and you feel that it's too much money, then you have the opportunity to vote for against it at that point in time. But until we go all and pursue the bid documents and exactly the price for the monogamy of the plastics, 
Finally, we'll have there. I'd just like to acknowledge Mr. Cliff Bowles. This is his last meeting as a member of the school committee. Uh, Cliff has been on the school committee for nine years. This year, he's the chairman. He's also been a member of the secondary school building committee for eight years. So I just want to take this opportunity to thank Cliff for his service. <laughs> Should the session stand be added on at minimal cost? So that's going to be included in that. So 
personality. Additionally, it may be, and again, this is in the uh, discussion stages with the uh, ethnic architect, uh, may be uh, able to include some sort of a second add-on as to what it would cost to put a structure on for the concession stand. But it's not part of the $650,000 initial uh, estimate that we have. But we put that in there so that maybe we can get, the, get an idea of what the marketplace would to come in at doing it all at once. And we'll have those answers for you for June time. Will the RPO consultant be or are you? No. No, that is not the answer because the design plans as to where they progress to is only allowed for this new structure. Again, we looked at about seven different ideas, which is what part of the money was spent. Part of the fifty thousand dollars was to do early design stages on different uh, different structures and different locations. And then the uh, athletic facility subcommittee in consultation with the school department, and the recreation department, and everybody else. So this is how we hold it in this proposal. So the proposal that's going to be put out for bid will be for this structure in this location where the current concession stand is located with an add-on. And the figure that we have in the bid is for probably the figure is going to be about twenty-five thousand dollars to add the slab and the foundation for additional structure later on. But that'll be an add-on to, to the bid structure. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Bowler. Ma'am. Linda Lally, 18 Southwick Road. I'm a little confused as to just what we're voting on tonight. In his original presentation, Selectman O'Leary said the firm figures would be brought to us in June. But this article, as printed in the warrant, says money to fund the design, construction, reconstruction, or remote modeling of the facilities. That to me sounds like a blank check. What are we voting on tonight? Just, I, I'll, I'll clarify that. The motion specifically states only this. Yes, the article is written in a way that they could have brought the entire project cost forward. But the motion stipulates within the four corners of the article this is $50,000 to prepare the detailed bid documents and specs. So they can get true cost for June. What, yes, now, I, I, before we take the vote, I will leave the motion, so you're all certain what we're voting for. Thank you. Sir. At the radio, 280 Gable Street. I do have to agree, I was just wondering, to the point of why we are not looking at also adding on to the snack shack, um, as Mr. Webster had said, a small building is very expensive to build, so why are we kicking this down the down the, to the future? Why are we looking to do this now? Also, has there been any thought of using funds instead of borrowing, taking some of the windfall of 16 to 18 million dollars that we're going to get from the sale? Why aren't we taking a million dollars and using that to do this with the cash? Thank you. Just earlier. We'll start with the end. We haven't got the money yet. Uh, the, the, the first step was tonight was to rezone the property so that multi could move forward. The most likely the other night signed the purchasing sales agreement. Uh, we don't anticipate uh, the cash windfall uh, for quite some time. Again, that money, as the finance director pointed out, will be available for long structures in like over 20 years. Uh, this is not necessary. So we're looking at it from a timeline standpoint. Uh, that's still up in the air in relation to when the money is possible. Uh, and to your point, in relation to the later point here, uh, we believe at this point in time we can get the architect to include within the appropriation that we're looking for some add-on features which would give us a better idea, if not final figures, as to what it would cost to put the concession stand on there as an add-on to the proposal. And if it's even appropriate, again, the board of selectmen was very concerned as well as the athletic subcommittee. We have real numbers to come to town meeting with the property. That's the $50,000 for. We're not asking for 650000 or, or more uh, to build a structure that we don't know how much it's going to cost. So we're asking for a response only because it gets to a point where we know exactly.
connected with the closest town meeting in June. We're going to jack it all up once we go into bid. So uh, we are looking at the phasing of it. We're looking at the whole picture. This is Bailey. Thank you, Mr.
the sale of recreational marijuana. It does not have anything to do with medical marijuana. That's a definition as determined by the state. And it doesn't mean that uh, it doesn't, uh, it, if people, that has nothing to do with people using marijuana in the town. It all has to do simply with the sale of, of recreational marijuana. Thank you. Further discussion?
Secondly, uh, just with the health benefits and the health uh, you know, uh, detriments to, to children and, and citizens as a whole, look at alcohol. It's way worse than marijuana it is, and I don't think that that should be a reason to hit the sale in our town. We have several establishments that allow people to drink up until 12 30 you know, in the morning. And just, you know, then they go in and drive home. It doesn't make sense, and it's not a good argument to me that the health benefits of the, the, the freedom of being able to sell something and sell this down. Thank you. Recreational marijuana is still a legal federal 
and we have an attorney general in Washington who's already vowed to shut down recreational marijuana facilities. Secondarily, I always hear about the revenue, the revenue, the revenue. What is the drain on our police department that's going to have to enforce this? Unlike alcohol, where the police department can have a breathalyzer, how are we going to legislate, how are we going to enforce operating under the influence with marijuana? There's no breathalyzer that's going to tell somebody's impaired or not. How about, what's the social cost of this? Is this what we want in our town? I recently finished my term as the president of the Reading North Reading Chamber of Commerce. No one but myself, no one more than myself has tried to get commercial business to come into North Reading. I don't think a recreational marijuana shop is the look we want for trying to encourage commercial business. And that's not what I think when I think of trying to expand the commercial tax base. services and I also oversee our town's um, youth prevention coalition. So this coalition um, is currently being funded by a federal grant that we were lucky enough to receive last fall. Um, and we are targeting two specific drugs, one being marijuana and the second being uh, prescription drugs. Uh, a couple of things I just want to point out. The first is that our opposition is related to access from young people. The other thing is that you should know there was a question brought up about are other towns moving forward with this. Most towns who have an active coalition, ours being one of them, Wakefield, Linfield, Greta, you mentioned, are all actively seeking a zoning um, outlaw from this, a zoning prohibition. So I just want to clarify that, that that is a trend going across um, the state of Massachusetts. Sir, thank you for recognition. So Haley, uh, 110 Lowell Road. Uh, yeah, it's actually this. Just to remind everyone, this isn't um, this isn't. I guess uh, this is only for the zoning bylaws. This isn't to uh, repeal anything that the tax or the taxpayers or voters are voting on for recreational marijuana throughout the state. And I thought it was 52 percent, 48. It's 54, 54 in the opposition. Uh, you also another thing to consider: you can't stop people from growing their own. I believe it's six uh, plants per person in, uh, in throughout the state. So that's another thing too. So you're not really going, the only thing this does is ensure that you're not going to have uh, that revenue. And I understand the social costs, which uh, that kind of, I don't know, that uh, falls kind of the wayside for who's thinking of the children, which is all, always on your deaf ears and just another kind of prattling on on not taking adult responsibility for something you would like to either do as an adult or just like uh, take advantage of uh, from a tax paying perspective. I mean, I don't know, I hope to, if people are going to get it from neighboring towns, anywhere else, if you want to take advantage of it, go for it. Uh, if you have more scruples about it, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I'm not a moralist, so we'll see what you do with that. But uh, yeah, let's do what you got to do. Thank you.
So if my tellers could please step forward. This is to amend the code which will prohibit the sale of recreation marijuana. This prohibits only recreational marijuana being sold in the town of Oregon. All those in favor, please raise your hands.